Uh, good evening and salutations, my GH fans. You know, in this episode, the more I watch Nina and Sunny talk, the more I realize that they deserve each other in the best way possible. It's like on days when EJ and Sammy were together, when I started watching this, um, you know, the new EJ. When they got back together, I was like, you know what? This is great. These are two toxic and kind of terrible people. I'd rather have them together with each other than them to just spread their misery with, you know, with pretty much anyone else. And listening to the conversation with Sonny and Nina, I was like, wow, y'all are in a lot of ways both delusional. Sonny sitting there talking about, you know, we are just pretty much sitting there saying that we're extra and we're over the top because we're just so passionate and we just we just love each other. You know, we I mean we just we just love so much that, you know, sometimes we just get a little carried away and it's not that we're like really bad people. I mean, yeah, we've hurt people before, but you know, and I'm just sitting there thinking, I'm like, um all that seems like that's coming out of your mouth is excuses for why y'all just been terrible people about 40 to 50 years so far. That's that's what I heard. And Nina. <laughs> oh, Nina, 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 Nina. One thing that I can sit there and say about these shows is that at least they're consistent to some extent. So, with Nina... The, the day that I really couldn't stand this character was during the whole Charlotte thing, right? And they, they brought that up. Nina, for me, just comes across as very delusional. She likes to rewrite history. She likes to sit there and play the victim, right? So she's upset with Carly, which is understandable because Carly did lie for like nearly a year or something along those lines, right? I'm like, okay, cool. I get it. You're angry at Carly. You're fierce at Carly. You're, you're hurt that this is the second daughter that she practically robbed time from you. All good. All fair points. Here's where this girl messed up at, okay? Here's where this delusional woman messed up. She's like, Carly practically watched them for a year tear each other apart argued, fought, all this other stuff. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> You're blaming Carly for your bad, toxic, delusional behavior when it came towards Willow? Are you kidding me? You're basically sniffed this saying that if Carly would have told the truth sooner, then you wouldn't have acted like that. Let's just sit there and say you're right, woman, okay? Let's just sit there and say you would have cleaned up your act and this, that, and the third. Here's option B. You didn't have to be such a terrible, god-awful person to Willow in the first place. And like Willow said, ever since Charlotte, she has made this woman's life a living nightmare. No, 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 no. That's before Carly found out that she was making her life living out. Okay? So even if you even if you sit there and you rub out that time that Carly should have told the truth, you still didn't have to be an awful person. You were an awful person to her even before that. So Nina's whole argument just pretty much kind of goes down the toilet at this point. Sonny sits there and makes excuses, and you sit there and you look at both of those two, and you're just like, man, when you really think about it, both of y'all two are just toxic and delusional as hell. I mean, Sonny's not as delusional as Nina, but they definitely deserve each other. That is the, that is the one thing that I took from that whole conversation. 
oh yeah, long story short, she's a match. Nina's a match. So just in case I forgot to sit down and say that, she's a match. So Michael and, and, and Willow are talking. And Willow wants to sit there and wait. In the beginning, she wants to sit there and, and wait for the full nine months. She doesn't want to sit there and get the... Because she, she says she was going to get the bone marrow. Um, the, the whole transplant and everything like that. But she wanted to wait. This way, you know, the baby has a better chance as far as not getting any defects and stuff like that. You know, premature baby and stuff like that. So she wants to wait. And Michael wants, you know, her to do it early. I understood Willow's point of view. So I understood, I understood where both of them were coming from. And they, they both weren't really wrong, but at the end of the day, it was Willow's choice. And so I didn't understand where she was coming from. And towards the end, just, you know, in case I forget, um, Willow did choose to, you know, um, get the, um, well, induce labor early. It's this way she can get the, you know, have the baby and, and then do the transplant. Um, but this is after she talks to Sasha. And Sasha <laughs> was making some excuses for Nina and her behavior, especially during the whole Charlotte thing. You know, Sasha was like, oh, you know, Nina's just saying, you know, fights for the people that she loves. And I was like, are you still on that stuff? Did you just, did you just hear what you just said? I mean, Will was like, I had the right to sit there and call Charlotte out on her bad behavior. She fights for the people that she loves. What the? F <laughs> I just, I, I. Oof. Um, but Willow pretty much was like, you know, listen, regardless of transplants, because she said she was going to get it, she was like, nothing changed, okay? Still don't like her, she's still toxic, she did a lot of stuff that was bad, and I want no parts of her, and now there's my children going to have any parts of her as well. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much what that, 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 um, ended. And of course, Chase was, Chase was there for Michael. I'm going to be, I, I, I really do like their friendship, Chase and Michael. So I'm glad that they did work it out, you know, um, because I'm going to be honest, I don't think that Michael really has a lot of friends. I don't think that he really has a lot of friends at all. He has a lot of family, but he doesn't really have a lot of friends. You know, somebody that you could sit there and hang out with and go drinking with and stuff like that. He doesn't really have that. So it's actually kind of cool to sit there and see their relationship. Um, they don't really talk about much of anything. So just um, Chase just listening to him and just, you know, letting him vent. And of course, both of them, well, Chase also found out that Nina is um, Willow's mother. So, you know. Pretty sure on some on some level he's feeling bad for Willow on top of everything else that she's dealing with. <sighs> Valentine and Adam, they're one step closer to um, finding out, you know, um, getting Lucy back. They found the building and they talked to some kid, so they get more intel about um, I don't know something. I, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> The, the copy I was with there watching, you know, because I was watching on YouTube, say so you go in, you go out. But, you know, apparently the kid gave him some sort of useful information. So now they got some sort of plan about trying to get in the, the compound or whatever. Let's just sit there and take a look at this whole thing. We haven't seen them for like, what, three weeks, give or take? They're one step closer. They didn't actually go to the place. They didn't actually find her yet. They're just, now they're in Paris, and they're one step closer. So I guess in like a good three weeks when people forgot, I guess we could sit there and be reminded when we saw them again, you know, when we see them again. I feel bad for the, what do you call it, Vanna fans? To some extent. Because the only thing, I mean, I'm, I'm not... I don't really know about those fandoms or anything like that. It's kind of like the Toriya fan base, you know. They don't really care. I don't. At least I don't think that they care. 
that they don't really give them a good story. They don't really give them an interesting storyline. They don't give them anything to do that is productive, that is moving their storylines along, that is evolving the characters or anything like that. I think they just care that they're just cute together. They just like seeing them together. And it's the same thing with Valentine and Anna. They didn't actually do anything today. They just sat there and he kissed and he looked cute. So, awesome. You know what else is cute? <sighs> Watching videos of cats and puppies on Instagram. Just saying. Yeah, they didn't really do too much of anything. Um, Va Victor came to see Esme about the baby and everything like that. And Martin came in there. And Martin kind of pulled Val um, Victor out. And was like, you know, yeah, I'm, re I'm, re um, I'm representing Esme. But here's the thing, though. Seeing how I'm so worried about Lucy, it's really hard to sit there and focus on Esme's, you know, trial. And I mean, if I don't have my head in the game, who knows what could sit there and happen? I mean, she may actually wind up having that baby in jail. I mean, you wouldn't want something like that to happen. To kind of give him a little nudge. But to be honest, I... That, um, Victor is probably not going to budge. So him tanking the case isn't really, isn't going to really do anything. And I think, well, also, Martin does have some sort of morals. So he's not going to sit there and take his whole case. So that whole conversation, that little light threatening thing, didn't really do anything. So that's the thing about villains and heroes. Villains can always sit there and count on heroes' morality. Which is why everything that he said, I'm just like, yep, mm, sure, whatever. Um, how else happened in this episode? Oh yeah, Esme and Ryan talk. They really talk about, oh, that's what it is. It was something interesting. Heather can't really be going out anymore because the guard that, um, you know, was really helping her out got fired for stealing. Seriously? You get fired for stick. <sighs> so he gets fired he gets fired for stealing. And now um you know Heather's plan is to sit there and use a shank to sit there and kidnap a guard to get out and um try to find Esme or to sit there and exonerate her. And you know, Ryan's like, hey, you know, her her being in jail is not part of my plan about, you know, getting back with Ava because he's still delusional enough to think that after him killing Kiki, he still has a shot at being with Ava. I mean, the only only shot he would ever have is if she was hypnotized and she did not remember Kiki. That is the only way I can ever see a union like that working out. So I had the plans on on um, escaping, but then she see Asma get thrown back, you know, get thrown in the, um, you know, in the crazy house with them, which is very convenient. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. It's very convenient. So now, um, doesn't really she doesn't really have to leave. She doesn't have to really sit there and go on a run or anything like that. You know. Um, Ryan's like, you need a plan. Like, what, what are you, what are you going to do? Like, that's not really a good thought out plan. But now it doesn't really, it doesn't even like, she doesn't have to worry about that. And he doesn't have to worry about that. So, okay. Um, yeah, I feel like that's pretty much about it. I can't really think of anything else that happened in this episode. It was, it was okay. Um, Kind of middle of the road episode, but you know, it's a Tuesday, so apparently, um, that's, that's okay for the show or the showrunners. I don't know. It wasn't the worst episode, but hopefully throughout the week, it will start to get better. Sometimes I just don't understand the pacing of the show, especially with Anna and Valentine. We didn't see them in like three weeks, give or take. They get one step closer, and then we won't see them for another three weeks. 
four soap operas left, only three are on the air. To sit there and say they need to step it up is pretty much an understatement at this point. Okay, sure. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe, and I will see you in the next video.